Other news uh, this morning, and important news too, talking about the situation and how we're managing the economic crisis. Uh, is it time to scrap the cap on bankers' bonuses, potentially tripling their salaries? The new chancellor, Kwasi Kwarteng, thinks they should be able to earn even more because he's trying to look at how businesses, you know, deal with their staff during the cost of living crisis, but it isn't chiming well with those who feel they already earn enough. The European Banking Authority found that 3,519 bankers that work in the UK earn more than 1 million euros a year. That's more than seven times as many of those working in Germany, where, of course, this cap will still work, so it's an EU cap. That was introduced yeah, the which we then chose to keep. 3,500 in earning more than a million euros a year, but do they deserve more? Interesting. We're going to be debating that shortly. We're going to get the news, weather and travel where you are. See you in a minute. It is 20 minutes, 26 minutes, excuse me, past them. Good to have you with us this morning. So the Chancellor, Kwasi Kwarteng, is planning on scrapping the cap on bankers' bonuses in hopes of attracting, attracting top global talent to the City of London. Even now, bankers are collecting their biggest bonuses since before the 2008 financial crisis. London's big four banks, HSBC, Barclays, Lloyds and NatWest, gave out a total of £5.2 billion in bonuses the last financial year. Critics say removing the cap will allow payouts to soar whilst millions continue to suffer during a cost-of-living crisis. Well, joining us now is Dave Fishwick, who owns the Bank of Dave. He thinks it's ridiculous to remove the cap when people are struggling to turn on their gas and power supplies. And also former Brexit Party MEP Ben Habib, who says what people earn in the city has nothing to do with the cost of living crisis. Should we come to you first of all then? Um, because you think it's got nothing to do with the cost of living crisis. It's not the way people feel though, is it? Well, politically, it, it, you know, it's a, it's a hot potato to be removing a cap on bonuses, ostensibly allowing people in the city to earn more when the majority of the populace are suffering. But that's not what the removal of the cap is about. And in order to understand it, really, you've got to go back to when the cap was first put in place, which was after the credit crunch. And the reason the cap was put in place was because it was used as a blunt instrument to prevent bankers in the city taking undue risks. Um, and those risks that they were taking then, which brought the banking system to its knees, was really driven by them using commercial bank deposits for investment banking high risk activities. Since 2010, the um, separation, if you like, between commercial banking and investment banking has taken place. And this cap on bonuses is frankly redundant. And the other thing just I want to mention perhaps before you go to David is that paradoxically, when the cap was brought in, in order to maintain competitiveness in the city, salaries went up. You know, so the notion that removing the cap is an automatic sort of uh, uh, free for all to raise uh, remuneration in the city isn't right. The cap, if you like, creates a more constrained market, a less dynamic market. It resulted in earnings going up back in okay. 2010. And actually removing it gives the city a much greater dynamic ability to react to market forces let's, let's, can I'd, at the moment. Let, let's put those things to Dave, because he's, yes. he's busting to try and come <laughs> in and, and, and come back. I disagree completely. We need banks run by the people to benefit the people, run by the communities to benefit the communities they're supposed to be. Casino banking has to end. You've got 50% of bankers on one side are going to go long on a stock, which is going to bet it's going to go up. You've got the other 50% that's going to go short on the stock, which is betting it's going to go down. Half of them are always going to be right, just because you toss a coin heads or tails. But casino banking has to end. If a banker gets it right, he gets paid a fortune. If he gets it wrong, us, everybody at home, has to pay. The taxpayer pays. That has to stop. People who rob banks go to prison. Banks who rob people get paid bonuses. Mm -hmm. How does that work? I mean, you yourself have done very well as a businessman, haven't you? And so why would you want to prevent others doing very well? That's a very good question. I haven't got a problem with anybody making 
Thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions. If you can play football and get yourself millions of pounds a year, fantastic. If you can knock somebody out in a ring on a, on a sky boxing night and, and make millions of pounds, fantastic. However, if you need the taxpayer to bail you out after if you get it wrong, that's where the problem is. We need to be able to claw back some of the money. Mm. We need decency, honest and ethics putting back into banking. One but of the, David, one of the, the, the cap, though, uh, is supposed to be, uh, as Ben was just explaining, part of, of de-incentivising crazy risks. So if you say people are doing well and taking the risk and, and using their skill, because that risk is based on skill, and they get rewarded for it, isn't that a good thing? Why does removing the cap on that, you know, help? If, how can you have, in today's day, how can you have somebody, like a lady who's just borrowed some money off me at the bank mm. today to buy an oven? She's called Diane. She makes baking biscuits for dogs. She makes mm. dog biscuits. She's borrowed money, uh, a few thousand pounds, to buy this huge big cooker to, to, to put into a place in Accrington. She's just got a little unit in Accrington and she's going to have a go at working for herself. She's terrified of the energy mm. bill and, and the up crisis that's coming. She's terrified of what the bills are going to be. How can you have, in a decent, honest, ethical world, somebody like that that's terrified of starting a business because of the energy bills are going to go up and on the other side, the bankers are saying they need over three million, four million, five okay. million bonuses? Let's, let's, Good point. let's put that to Ben because, Ben, you know, this, uh, the, the figure that I mentioned before we went to the local news, the European Banking Authority, says 3,519 bankers working in the UK earn more than a million euros a year. That's £873,000. As you've said, the banks have found their way round this bonus cap. They are paying more money as it is. When we have this cost of living crisis, the illustration that Dave's just given of us, of Diane, who's setting up a dog biscuit cooker and she wants to sort of create her own business, there is a sense that, you know, while, while she's terrified of what might come, the bankers are just making hundreds and hundreds of thousand pounds. Why do they need more money? Well, there are two things I'd like to say about what David said. First of all, he's conflating issues. Um, the notion that the taxpayer now needs to uh, bail out bankers who take high risks is, is gone. That, that doesn't exist anymore, that risk, because commercial banking and investment banking activities have been separated. The problem in 2010 was that they were together. The deposit-taking banks were being used the cash and deposit taking banks was being used for high risk business, out of which bankers were being paid what you might but call egregious bonuses. Are they going to pay bonuses. that back before they take but, any more? That's the but, thing, Ben. Are they going to pay back the look, billions David, and billions and billions that they took off the taxpayer and granny that's home with her pension money that puts it in the bank and her £10 and, 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 the and, and, and they need it to be safe and then you guys go and send David, it abroad and, and bet millions David, on the stock going up? It's the, the, wrong. The notion, it's fundamentally the no wrong. You do not make the lady to whom you refer richer and more able to meet her, her bills by reducing the ability for people in London to make money. But the I, fact I, don't, is, I, if you, I don't have a problem with people is, making David, money, but million David, rubies, dog biscuits, David, they are more the, important than a banker David, having three million instead of two million. You know, that about, is the important David, thing we need to get not, back to bank. Let, let, let's let Ben, sorry Ben, carry on. Sorry, ben. Removing the cap is not about paying bankers more. Removing the cap is about attracting the best talent to London and giving them appropriate packages for their stay in London. Why would you want David Solomon, for example, who is chief executive of Goldman Sachs, to be based in New York, equally capable of running banking operations in London, running them successfully I'd rather him be based New in New York, York then, if he's going to spend billions on the stock market, David, rather than helping you... real people in this country get back David, to what banking David, used to be, which is putting your money in with a bank and that bank lending it out to decent, honest, well, ethical people and the profit going back to the community. David, but you're wrong, aren't you? Because deposit-taking banks can't do high-risk business anymore. You're missing the point that commercial banking activities and investment banks have been separated. No, David, actually, what you run is not a bank. What you run is what's I've, called a savings I've, and loans. Well, let's just, you don't let's run just, a bank. You haven't got a then. banking so license. I help people get the best rate of interest on the high street. Yeah, but you don't run a bank. You don't take deposit. Okay, okay, okay. Just a profit I give to charity. David doesn't run a bank. Hold on a moment, Ben. Hold on a moment. This isn't about Dave and the bank that he runs. We don't want to focus on that. We want to focus on the idea of a bank. Let's go back to Ben and run a bank. No, 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 Ben. Ben, you're getting quite cross because you're wrong. 
Let's just go back to your point that you were making about that. I mean, I think the thing that the uh, Chancellor is keen to look at is attracting the best talent to the UK to work. That is the one thing that he's turned around and said, we need to bring these people to the country because that helps the country. And, and, and as an example of one of the best talents, you might take David Solomon, for example. And he earned $35 million last year. Do you want him to sit in New York earning that $35 million? Or would you rather he was in London and paying 50% of that over to the British Exchequer? Okay, Personally, then, I'll, I'll, I'd rather I'll, I'll have him in that. London. I'll, I'll go with that. Let's, I, let's, I, I'll calm and, it and, down. And, and, and I'll go with that. Do you really then? have a bad habit, David, of interrupting? Yeah, well, and, I, know, you know, I know Perhaps have you could with, just with let bankers. me finish. The problem is, Ben, if you're going to put a Goldman Sachs guy in at 35 million, that's not a problem. If he does really well and he's entitled to his money, fantastic. But there has to be some sort of clawback. We have to be well, able to be able to claw back, back from Goldman some Sachs. of the money Goldman if Sachs you get it wrong would as never we go be down the line. Out by okay. the British taxpayer. Goldman you... Sachs would never be bailed out by the British ben. taxpayer because it's not a commercial banking operation. Ben, 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 and Dave, ben and Dave, we're going to be talking about this for a while <laughs> as agree. the government really focus on it uh, after Monday too. So let's have both of you back to talk some more because I think this is a really interesting debate. But Thanks, thank you ben. both. Maybe we can thank get yeah, Ben in the studio as well because yeah. it'll be a bit easier if we're not trying to go down the Zoom. But Ben Habib, thank you for joining us and Dave Fishwick as well. Thank Good you. to have your thoughts this morning.